Welcome to a brand new format for the Cell Guru Show, where every week we'll take on one burning question from the world of mobiles and from the world of mobility. And these questions will be sent by you. And this is a question that came in last week. We all recognize the fact that Huawei and Honor make some of the best phones in the entire world. But the big question with all that's going on with Huawei, should you be buying a Huawei Honor phone right now? now and that question will be answered on the show plus of course i've got this incredible phone for you the oppo reno phone their new sub series that has really kicked up a storm with that we've got this the xiaomi note 7s plus i've got an incredible unboxing for you so lots of things happening on the show time to get started at the Apple Worldwide Developers Conference, the tech giant announces what the future holds for Apple users with iOS 13 and a whole lot more. The question on everyone's mind, the ones who own a Huawei or a Honor phone and the ones planning to buy it. Should you now post the US ban? We explain the ban and give you an answer. Oppo comes up with a beautiful camera-centric series. We review the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom and tell you if it's worth your money. And now Nokia brings a phone for the masses. We unbox the Nokia 2.2 and give you our first impressions. We're going to start off, of course, with news of the week. And the main news comes in from WWDC in the US. Apple comes up with a whole lot of new things. But of course, the brand new operating system, the dark mode and brand new features. These are the ones that affect you. Take a look. This has been by far the biggest Apple Worldwide Developers Conference in terms of all the stuff that Apple announced, which will be coming soon for all of us. The goodie bag from Apple includes the new iOS 13, focus on privacy, watch OS 6, TV OS 13, a new OS for iPads, and then some more. We will start with the new iOS 13. The new iOS 13 is set to launch this fall and brings about an onslaught of new features for your iPhone. Including a dark mode, this makes the entire system invert from a white background with a dark text to a dark background with a white text. The change will be integrated system-wide. The idea behind it is to reduce eye strain which might occur from looking at a brightly lit screen for too long, especially at night. The Photos app now has a new sorting feature which divides your picture according to day, month and year for easier browsing through the timeline. Apple also announced better editing settings and filters for pictures and videos including the ability to tweak the setting for lighting on portrait mode to change how your subject is lit and the ability to rotate a recorded video. Much needed. Safari, mail and notes get some updates. But the big rewrite is in reminders with smart suggestions and tagging people in the reminder. Apple focuses on privacy and it showed with all the new features Apple introduced as part of iOS 13. A new sign-in with Apple feature which lets you sign into apps and accounts without having to enter your email ID which will protect users from third-party offenders. So instead of signing in with Facebook or signing in with Google, now sign in with Apple. Apple sign-in version will require you to authenticate your identity with the use of Face ID and will not require you to type any personal information. Apple will also let you choose to hide your email ID or create a random email address which forwards to your real email address, therefore masking your real identity from any app or service. The new OS will also let you share your location just once and inform you if your location has been tracked by an app. Siri, Apple's inbuilt voice assistant, is also getting audio updates with sounds which will sound smoother to your ears. Memoji avatars now get support from Memoji profiles which puts a thumbnail of your Memoji into the Messages app. There are also new features for Memoji customization including more makeup options, accessories and hairstyles. The iOS 13 does not carry over to the iPad because Apple is releasing a new operating system for the iPad called the iPad OS. Apple's iPad OS features a new look for the home screen with a refined display and layout and a feature to pin useful widgets on the home screen. The OS has more gestures for easier switching in between multiple apps and to drag and drop multiple apps which can be later viewed in an expose-like view. USB drives and SD cards will now be supported in the Files app so you can just plug them into an iPad and get access to the files within this updated app. Apple is improving the latency of the Apple Pencil. Moving on to the Watch OS 6 and now with it the Apple Watch is getting its own app store. Apple previewed some of the apps which will be available on the new app store including an audiobooks app, a language translator, a calculator and new faces for the watch. There's a redesigned health app, hearing monitoring app called Noise and fitness tracking updates are coming. Also menstrual cycle tracking is coming to both the watch and the iPhone. So before we get started with anything else on the show, a very, very interesting unboxing that I did a very short while back. Let's take a look at something brand new from Nokia. 
So like I said, I quickly am doing this unboxing because this has just, just been announced and it is Nokia's Wasp. Now that was the code name. It's come out as Nokia 2.2 and it's a very interesting price point for a very, very interesting phone. I'm going to take you through everything that this phone has, but this is just a quick unboxing, quick look. Remember, the main review will come in a later show. So what all does it have? Let me just quickly read through the box and we'll open the box and take a look at the phone. So Android 9 Pie, 5.71 inch HD screen, Google Assistant button, face unlock, 13 megapixel autofocus rear camera. And like Nokia used to do earlier, it actually has express on covers. You can change the color. We'll take a look at that when I open it. 3000 mAh battery and it's got AI to actually get a better battery response. It's got a drop notch, two years updates, three years security, and Google Lens on the actual camera itself. And it's got a quad core MediaTek processor. Now let's take a look at the phone. Interesting that it's got quite a bit and yet the price is very aggressive. I'm showing you the price for the two various versions that have been released. Now let's take a look at the phone itself. So this is our quick unboxing. Now 5.7 inch screen and it's got a drop notch out here and express on covers. So this is the cover at the back. Now this one's got a gray, but you could buy different ones out there. 13 megapixel camera, like I said. So this is a very light phone in the hand, even though it's 3000 mAh as a battery. And uh, I think the most interesting part is that once again, Nokia comes up with something that is perfect for people who are absolutely sick and tired of the fact that phones are too big, the screens are too big. So I think this is perfect in the hand. So lots and lots of very cool things on this phone, which I'll take you through when I do the full review. This is a very quick unboxing. A new series, the two series from Nokia, super aggressively priced. And of course, the phone is looking very interesting too. And before we start off with our top story with the Oppo Reno review, let's take a look at the burning question of the week. With everything that's going on with Huawei, should you be buying a Huawei on a phone? So for those people that are saying, look, they make great phones, why shouldn't we buy them? Obviously, you've not been following the story. So I'm going to start from there. What's going on with Huawei? Huawei is a massive company in the world of tech. This is taken to be a god company. It's a huge brand. It's the world's number one telecom supplier. It's the number two brand in smartphones. It makes it much bigger than Apple and only second to Samsung. So you get this is a big company. Now this innovation and R&D leader has been banned by the US government to do any business with any company based in the United States. The main reason given is that Huawei is a Chinese spy and poses a risk to national security. Now this was said about Huawei's networking equipment imported by the US and not for the phones or the consumer products. In fact, no real proof has ever been given even about the networking products. This is pure politics and Huawei has come in between the crossfire of a massive massive trade war between the US and China. Well, you know, this really is nothing to do with technology. It's nothing to do with the company Huawei. They've just become a victim. They've been weaponized because there's this war going on now between the US and China, a trade war, and this is all politics. But how does this ban really affect Huawei? Actually, it's affected Huawei big time. If the ban was to come into place, it means Huawei cannot work or partner with companies like Google, Qualcomm, Intel, and a lot of other US companies. It therefore can't have Android on its phone. It can't have Windows or Intel on its laptops. It can't have Qualcomm chipsets on its phones or tablets. Google Map, YouTube, others may not work on Huawei Honor's new devices. There's a lot more in that story, but of course, now let's get down to the main part of it, and that is all that we know that's happening. Yes, it's a great company. Yes, they're doing great R&D. Yes, it's all politics. Yes, they've got these 90 days that they've got now. But again, the question is, should you be investing? Should you be putting money into a Huawei or an Honor phone? That's the main question, and here's our answer. Let's keep this simple, a straightforward answer. The Huawei ban will never really come into being. It's all a negotiation tactic. It's all politics. Here are the many reasons for it. Number one, Huawei got banned and then the US gave them a 90-day respite. And within that 90-day respite lies the answer. This entire lease of life is an obvious manipulation. The US wants China to come back to the table and negotiate a better trade pact. Second, if China wants it can retaliate far more brutally ban sales of all US products in China, including Apple and many other brands. Plus, could withdraw rare earth mineral sales to the US, which would leave the US 
almost completely crippled. So the ban will never come into play. Huawei is too big a company, too innovative a company, and too important in the tech space for it to be banned or taken down. That's the straight answer. If you like existing devices from Huawei and Honor, then go ahead and buy them. You will get security updates. Android will work just fine. All the Google services will work just fine now and even after 90 days. I have that from very reliable sources across all platforms. You know, the sad part of this is that if politics actually does this to technology, then how much of innovation and R&D goes back several years? We live in a golden era of technology, and Huawei is, a, is actually a company that showcases that. So very sad what's happening. I really, really hope everything now comes to a standstill and we can go back to taking innovation and technology forward. And let's move on now to our top story. This is the Oppo Reno, as promised last week. This is going to be our big review, and I'm going to tell you everything about the phone that I totally love. First and foremost, it's a great looking phone. Second, the optics of this phone are at a completely different level. The Sony sensor, the 48 megapixel part of it, the 10x hybrid zoom, the shark fin rising camera, all of it is amazing. Then it has no notch. So if you take a look at in terms of what they've done with the Whoop 3.0 charger, the extra battery life that this has, this is a phone that's literally got everything, including a Snapdragon 855 processor. And then what Oppo did is something very smart. They set expectation that we're going to give you a super flagship phone at a pretty high price. The expectation was between 45 to 49,000 rupees for the base. They brought it down to around 39,000 rupees. And that has really, really started getting the market very, very excited. Here then is our review. What comes to your mind when you hear the word shark? The powerful and swift fish, the movie Jaws, the baby shark doo 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 song. But from now, it will also remind you of a phone, a phone called the Reno, a one of a kind phone that comes with a motorized shark fin camera and is part of a brand new series from Oppo. This, pro, uh, this series are engineered for creativity. So we want to establish a whole new brand impression uh, from previously we call ourselves like a fashionable brand, a young brand, but we realize that the core business actually goes to the technology and the product themselves. It's very important because the consumer, what consumer is using every day or interact with your brand is actually the product. So that is why we think uh, it's the right time to release Reno because it represents technology innovator and also the creativity for the users. We have the superior variant, the Oppo Reno 10X Zoom for review. We have to say that it's an intriguing phone and we wanted to know all that it can do the minute we got our hands on it. And of course, we started with the pop-up shark fin camera on the front. When you turn on the face unlock, it pops up. When you want to click a selfie, it pops up and will go down when not in use. Oppo claims that the shark fin pop-up camera will last for at least 200,000 openings, which means that if we open the camera 100 times a day, it should last us easily about five years. We have seen many pop-up cameras by now, but we like that this one stands out. The front camera is 16 megapixel and clicks good selfies, and yes, there is a beauty mode. On the back, the Reno 10X Zoom boasts of three cameras, a 48 megapixel primary lens using Sony sensor, plus an 8 megapixel ultra wide and a 13 megapixel telephoto lens. There's also dual optical image stabilization. We love the pictures from the Reno, the colors and the details were sharp. Even the low light photos came out well. And now coming to the 10X Zoom capability. We got details till a point post which the noise increased, but the 10X Zoom works well. It is smooth and fun to play with. Oppo Reno 10X Zoom is a solid phone and we held it in our hands and we could feel the weight. We are not saying that it's bad, it's just that with all the sleek phones around, this feels slightly heavy. We love the glass back and front and how the camera lens are inside the glass and not protruding. But even though it's all glass, the phone doesn't support wireless charging. We wonder why. The back is flat except one thing, the O dot. A dot size bump to slightly raise the phone when placed on its back, we guess only Oppo could think of such a design. The colour is another factor that adds taste to this phone. We have the beautiful ocean green colour and we absolutely love it. The all-display Reno 10X Zoom comes with a 6.6-inch OLED display with a 1080 by 2340 resolution making the screen crisp with vivid colours. The Reno 10X Zoom runs on the latest version of Colour OS, the Colour OS 6 on top of Android Pie. There is now an app drawer and a newly designed notifications drop-down. The UI is clean with less bloatware. There is an in-display fingerprint scanner which works well. The phone uses its three microphones to capture what Oppo claims is 360-degree audio. 
When it comes to power, Oppo hasn't compromised a bit. The Renault 10X Zoom comes with the newest Snapdragon 855 and with 8GB and 6GB RAM options. We have the 8GB variant with us and we enjoyed our time with the phone. It is snappy and quick and even while playing games, everything loaded smoothly and fast. The smartphone supports WOOF 3.0 flash charge and is backed by a massive 4065mAh battery. So basically, we were sorted for the entire day. The price points are a little more than what you would expect from Oppo. The 8GB plus 256GB variant is priced at Rs 49,990. The 6GB plus 128GB variant is priced at Rs 39,990. Rupees. If any product which you come in the India market and that really solving the consumer, that really improving the consumer experience, really solving the consumer problem, then people are liking it. So to, if you see last year, we had launched the uh, flagship, our Find X, which is super work. So now in the major problem the smartphone users are facing is the charging. Now we have in this, we had launched the VOOC 3.0 along with that hybrid uh, 10X uh, Zoom. So that together make the, this device a perfect and it's really solving the consumer problem and improving their experience. So that really attract the Indian consumer for this product. The Selguru verdict. With so many phones launching every day, it's very difficult to stand out and make your own space. But even in this crowded market, Oppo Reno 10X Zoom is not only different but also makes its case without any compromises. It's a beautiful phone which we are happy to recommend if you want an absolutely premium camera phone and are okay to spend more than what you will otherwise spend on a mid-range phone. Time now to take a quick break right now on the Cell Guru Show. We'll be right back. Ten thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine rupees. That's the price of the next phone, the Redmi Note Seven S from Xiaomi. And Xiaomi says now this is a phone and a price point for everybody that wants a 48 megapixel phone. In fact, it says it right here on the box, right under Redmi Note 7S. It says 48 megapixel AI camera. So therefore, that is the big deal. Here's a very quick look at the phone. Nearly a month after the Xiaomi Redmi 7 was launched, it's already time for it to be phased out. Well, that's what Xiaomi claims with the all-new Redmi Note 7S. At just 1,000 rupees more than the 7, this phone is set to pack in a lot more and offer specifications that might just be Redmi Note 7 Pro level. The Redmi Note 7S starts at 10,999 rupees for the 3GB RAM and the 32GB storage variant. But does this phone simply blend into the crowd or does it stand tall on its own? Let's find out. On the design front, the Redmi 7S has a glass body like the Redmi Note 7 with a gradient finish. We got the Sapphire Blue variant for review and it has a nice shiny back. The phone has Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the back which makes it quite durable. It has a P2i splash resistant coating as well. On the display front, it has a large 6.3 inch screen with a full HD Plus display. The viewing angles are pretty good. The Redmi 7S does well on performance. It runs on the Snapdragon 660 chipset and handles multitasking smoothly. We didn't face any issues browsing multiple apps on this phone. But the big upgrade from the Redmi 7 is the camera. This phone houses a 48 megapixel main lens along with a 5 megapixel lens. The shots we took were quite impressive with adequate depth in the shots. The details were good as well, but don't be confused. The sensor on this phone is different from the Sony IMX586 sensor on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. This has a Samsung GMI sensor. The trade-offs are not very great low-lit shots. The front camera on the Redmi 7S is a 13 megapixel lens with good portrait images. So it's all good on the optics front. But what about the juice this phone packs in? Well, the Redmi Note 7S impresses us with a 4000 mAh battery with quick charge for support. The phone will last you around one and a half days of heavy use. The final verdict? The Redmi Note 7S is a welcome addition to the Redmi family. At around 11,000 rupees, it does well as a day-to-day -day phone, especially one that houses a massive 48 megapixel camera. If you're looking at a strict budget of under 12K, look at this phone. Otherwise, the Redmi Note 7 Pro remains the head of this family. That then is the show for this week. For the next two weeks, I'm promising you something. We'll of course have our burning questions of the week. That is becoming our format. 
but we've got so many and I'm going to repeat this again so that you get my emphasis. We've got so many interesting, amazing, incredible things happening on the show. There are more launches coming up in the month of June and I think happened in November, October last year, which is supposed to be festival season. But remember, you keep track of us and you'll keep track of all technology. See you next week on the show.